Hey guys, so the video you're about to watch is a bunch of clips from a Q&A panel I did about a week ago for a STEM program here in my hometown. There are a bunch of questions that I've actually been asked a lot on my YouTube channel as well as on my Instagram, so I thought it'd be good to just throw them all into a video for you guys to watch. So I'll have all the questions labeled as chapters at the bottom of the video or in the description as timestamps so you guys can skip to whatever question you want to hear me talk about. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. I'll turn over to Sean and you guys can start the student panel portion. Perfect. Thank you so much again for having us. Uh, so we have a couple of questions just prepared ahead of time, but uh, if you guys have any additional questions, just like feel free to throw them in the chat or interrupt us. We're happy to answer any questions uh, kind of about anything related to medical school or STEM or anything like that. Uh, so the first question uh, for the day is what do you love about STEM? I kind of found like a late uh, enjoyment for STEM. In high school, I wasn't uh, so keen on uh, like the sciences. Uh, but I really enjoyed things like sports and whatnot. And so when college came around and I had to kind of declare like what I was doing, I realized, you know, I really like sports and STEM has a lot of application, uh, especially when it comes to like biology, anatomy, physiology. And that's kind of how I found my way to where I am now. So uh, kind of just like the way that it integrates with our lives. Um, I think STEM is just like all the different fields is so interesting. Question number two is how did you find out that you wanted to be a doctor? When I was about 15, I had started doing some volunteer work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, and then when I was 17, I became a wish grantor with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And that was more for like, you know, fun uh, and just like getting involved in the community. And I got to meet like a lot of kids uh, who were kind of like battling different illnesses, cancers. And so that was kind of my first like, sign that I might be interested in medicine because I was like looking up like their like cancers and stuff because I was, I was just curious because um, I didn't know anything about these things and so I explored a couple other fields like physical therapy I shadowed uh, some like physician assistants and uh, nurse practitioners and I, I think I, I overall came to um, you know wanting to be a doctor and I think it's for like similar reasons as uh, some of my colleagues have stated I, we, we kind of want to know like the why of things uh, I think that's like something we we kind of crave like you know i enjoyed learning like like uh like therapies and stuff when i was thinking about doing physical therapy but it was always like the diseases that interest me and like the why like why these things happen and so that's kind of what ended up solidifying that i wanted to be a physician our third question is uh things you wish you would have known in middle school to prepare you for high school i think um kind of like at middle school going into high school you spend a lot of like time kind of like thinking about like what you're doing. Um, I know I personally spent a lot of time like making sure I was like fitting in, doing things like sports and whatnot. And um, you know, I think if I like could have known anything different, I think it was to like have that acknowledgement that middle school and high school are kind of like your times of growth. It's like a great time to like explore things, try something, realize you don't like something. Like if you spend time trying something and then you end up not liking it, it's it's not wasted time. It's just as important to find out what you don't want to do uh, as it is to figure out what you do want to do. And so I, I kind of wish I had like kind of like tried more things and uh, you know, I, I did sports and whatnot, but like, for example, I wasn't very focused on school. Like I, I went to school and I did okay, but I wasn't like, I wasn't thinking very like, I wasn't very future oriented. So I wasn't thinking of like how important it was to like, you know, you know, do well in school and leave something academic as a possibility. Granted, it's fine now in the medical school, so uh, it's okay. I, I just wish I had known, I think, like, you know, try different things, excel in a few, but, you know, in life, like, you can, you can do multiple things. Like, you don't need to pigeonhole yourself into, like, one thing that you're doing for the rest of your life. Like, you know, get different hobbies, enjoy different things. If you go back to eighth grade, what would you tell yourself? Like, if I could go back to eighth grade and tell myself anything, it's basically just to, like, keep having fun. I remember feeling like stressed, like freshman year of uh, high school, I had a friend and we're still great friends. Um, I remember he was so gun ho he's like, I'm gonna be a lawyer one day. I'm like, man, this guy knows what he's doing. He used to wear like, like button up shirts to school. And I was like, wow, he's so he's so grown up. Like, what am I doing? Uh, I just like to do like sports and stuff. And so I felt like I was like, why, why don't I know what I'm doing? Um, he was so gun ho on it. And now now he's in LA. Uh, be doing acting he's like not doing he's not a lawyer at all uh, so like you know it's okay to not know what you want to do you should do a lot of things you should just enjoy like the energy you guys have now like I don't know how you guys wake up and like go to school at, like 7 a.m go to classes until like 2 or 3 and then do extracurriculars like I know like we used to do that too but like 
now we'll have like lecture for like two hours and I need a nap. So like enjoy the energy that you guys have now uh, and really use that to like, you know, find the things you love to do. Even if that's like five different things, like you can do five different things for the rest of your life. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend just using the energy you have now, say yes more, try new things, like, you know, really just enjoy this time. It's, it's, it's an awesome time. I see Michaela says, were there any other careers that you almost went for? This is actually a great question. I was, uh, I was undeclared until I had finished my second year of college. So I didn't even like know what major I was doing until after I finished two years of college. I, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I had the idea of being a doctor, but kind of similar to Kat, like I had my doubts, you know, everyone tells you how hard it is and, it, you know, kind of scares you uh, from doing it. So I, I wasn't really sure at first. It was kind of, kind of just like an idea. Um, throughout all of high school, I really enjoyed doing things like tricking and tumbling and like acrobatic related stuff. And so I kind of got lucky, like my first, uh, during my first semester of college, I kind of randomly got a contract to do shows on the East Coast. Um, for a few months and so like I would fly out, I would do school, fly out there and do shows and at first I was like, oh yeah, this is sick. I'm gonna become like a professional like acrobat. Like, you know, it paid pretty well. Uh, and then I did that for like two years and I was like, oh man, like, yeah, I, there's no way I'm doing this when I'm 30. Like my joints aren't gonna have it. Uh, so that was, it was great to explore that. And that's kind of what we were kind of getting at earlier is like definitely explore different things. Like even if it takes a little bit extra time cause it's important to find out things like that you probably won't do. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do that. And so again, I saw the, the idea of healthcare in my mind. So I went down the path of like physical therapy and I went pretty far. I was like the vice president or maybe even the president of like a, the pre-physical therapy honor society. I did a lot of shadowing. Um, I was pretty good friends with the admissions director for UNLV's program. And I was like pretty set, like I was about to apply for physical therapy school. Uh, and then I just like had this moment of doubt and I was like, no, like I totally wanted to be a doctor, but I like talked myself out of it or I got scared or whatever. Uh, and that was like a good realization. Like even like though, if I had realized that like maybe two years prior, I might've gotten to medical school sooner. I still think it was important to like take that time to explore other things and like really solidify, like, you know, have that moment where I'm like, no, this, th that is what, actually what I wanted to do. And so I like, I completely switched gears. Um, but I still ended up like majoring in uh, kinesiology, which was I think good for pretty much all of that because it kind of gave me experience with like physical therapy, experience with medicine related stuff. Um, so yeah, I explored a couple of different career paths uh, before deciding to be a physician. So Theodore asked, uh, how are your study habits different now than they were in high school? This is also a great question. I think one of the most important things now compared to high school is like time management. I feel like we have a lot of responsibilities, like everyone's been saying, um, and we have a lot to study. Like we definitely have a lot more to study than I've ever had to like learn ever. Um, and even though it's a lot, I think time management has been the most important like thing. Like every single day, like I, I know what I want to do that day. And even like right now, like I'm already thinking about like what I'm doing between each hour of my day today. And so I think that's a way of thinking that I definitely did not have in high school. In high school, I was like studying you know the week of the exam or even like the day before the exam and that's just like not something that happens now um and yeah, i feel like you realize it especially in college but i think just developing like time management habits study habits like you know a little bit every day rather than trying to like cram the night before like you really don't have to study like that much per day and then you'll find out like by the time the exam comes up that like you know, because you had kind of studied a little bit over time rather than cramming, you feel like, okay, like I, I studied enough, I can kind of relax a little bit now. So I think that's kind of how my habits changed was just like more consistent studying rather than like cramming. So the next question is from Michaela and is what was the most memorable saying that stuck with you throughout the years and what slash why made it important? For me, a saying that's really stuck with me, and it's a saying like from one of my own personal experiences, is uh, we're all gonna be 35 one day. And 35 is just a number that came up uh, because of this experience that has nothing to do with like age or like anything. Uh, but basically, uh, like I said earlier, I was exploring physical therapy for a while, and I was shadowing this physical therapist, and we were just like chit-chatting, and uh, he was like, He's like, so, so like, why are you, uh, like, why are you stopping physical therapy? Like, why, why, why aren't you going all the way? I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, and he's like, like, why aren't you like going, like doing med school or something? And it, I thought it was a weird thing for the physical therapist that I was shadowing to ask me, like, why am I, like, why am I settling at physical therapy? Not to say like, 
physical therapy side, like it's a great field, but it was a weird question. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, he's like, I'm 35. Uh, he's like, I chose, one of the reasons I chose physical therapy was because um, I considered medicine and it, it was a little bit shorter and uh, I was able to get through a little bit faster. But now I'm 35 and I kind of, if I had gone to medical school, I would have been like done years ago. I would have been a doctor practicing on my own. Um, but I chose like something that was a little bit faster. And it, like that was actually probably like the conversation that really just made me like switch because it was the idea that I didn't want to be 35 one day thinking back, like, did I choose like a shorter route just to like get somewhere quicker, even though like we're, time's going to go by at the same pace. Right. Um, and that's a quote that still kind of like sticks with me, like throughout medical school, even like when I think about things like kind of some of like the social cost of going to medical school, like, like uh, my brother, so my, my siblings and I are the same age, and so my brother's buying like his first house this year, and like we were born the same day, but I'm not gonna buy a house this year. I'm not gonna buy a house for like a lot of years. Uh, I'm not gonna make money for a lot of years. And so uh, I have to remind myself that like, you know, we're both gonna be 35 one day. Uh, we're, we're, we're both gonna have a house. We're gonna be in our careers. Like, it's not something I need to like rush to. It's better to do what I actually wanna do rather than trying to take like a shortcut. Um, so that was a memorable saying that's like stuck with me and something that like I, I think about like probably several times a week or I even have a friend right now who's considering uh, going to PA school or over going to medical school because PA school is a lot shorter and I keep telling him and I'm like you're, we're, you're gonna be 35 one day like think about from that perspective like what will you be happy that you had done because again time is still gonna move by at the same pace uh, so yeah what made you go to school at UNLV I'm the only one here who didn't go out of state or out of Las Vegas for undergrad. I stayed here at UNLV for undergrad and then obviously now for medical school. Um, I just really like the Las Vegas community. Even after high school, I knew I wanted to stay here. Uh, I was involved in like community service that I wanted to continue here. Um, I really enjoyed traveling and I think that like, I, I think Las Vegas is just a great place to be based out of because it's so easy to go to like you know, a different state. Like you could just drive in any direction and end up somewhere cool. Um, and overall, I think the community here is just so cool. It's like a cultural like melting pot. Like it, there's so many different like cultures here. Um, I, I could see like the type of growth that this community could have. And I think like getting a medical school like here was like a huge step. Um, and the things that we're able to do in the community like just kind of shows that. And so I knew I wanted to stay at UNLV. Also, um, when it comes to tuition, like you, you can't really beat it. Like in-state tuition is, is pretty important. Uh, it's, it's a great tuition cost, especially if you look at like the, like the average cost of like medical school. Um, so that was great. Uh, but then again, like knowing that I'm probably going to want to practice here and that's kind of what UNLV has a focus in as well as like creating physicians for Las Vegas. Uh, that just kind of all lined up with uh, things that were important to me. So the next question is, do you find yourself having pressure studying or being in the medical field? If so, how do you overcome it? I think we're always gonna have like this baseline pressure that's never gonna change. But I think by treating it as a baseline, I think that's like helped a lot rather than kind of like putting like school on this like pedestal and saying that like, if anything bad happens with school, like my life's over. Um, cause that's, that's really not true. Uh, like I, I, I failed like biology in high school and I failed like a math class, like freshman year of college. And I was like, oh yeah, there's no way I'm going to become a doctor, but that, that wasn't true. And, and you know, anything you want to do, you're, you're going to get it done. Um, I think pressure is important in allowing us to grow, but if we cave into the pressure, I don't think that's good. Uh, and uh, Andrew talked about this, you know, your own mental health, physical health, that's more important than anything you're doing. Like if medical school made us like like sad or upset or just not enjoy like what we're doing then it's not worth it because anything that you know makes you sad isn't worth doing uh and so i think that we kind of treat medical school as like this baseline commitment and there's always gonna be a pressure but like if i'm tired of studying like i just won't study like i'll, I'll stop and that, that's it. Maybe I'll take a break for a couple hours or maybe I'll just take a break for the rest of the day. Uh, because realistically, like, it's not going to make a difference if I just sit there and try 
to study when I feel like loads of pressure. I'd rather just go do something fun. Um, and it's been touched upon that you should have like different hobbies that kind of take your mind off things. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, just like having things that you enjoy doing and just realizing that, you know, we, we have a lot to us that's not just medicine and medical school and you shouldn't just put like kind of like I guess all your energy into that. You should make sure that you're happy outside of it. What was the biggest doubt that almost stopped you from picking your career and how did you overcome it? I think doubting yourself, imposter syndrome, uh, like I said earlier like in early college I failed like my first college math class and I was more of like a B average student so like I think my GPA dropped to like a 2.6 and I lost like my Millennium Scholarship I was like oh man and I had this idea of being a doctor and I told like the pre uh, pre med advisor and he was like oh like maybe not you know GPA is kind of low there and like I, I did not like that feeling I was like wow like I'm almost being like told I probably won't be able to do something because of like my own characteristics like my own like grades for example I didn't like that feeling and I, I that's kind of it was a really good moment of realization that I like I wanted to be the person in control of like what I did and didn't do with my with my life and career not like like grouped into something because like I wouldn't be able to achieve something uh, else and so I think that really helped me overcome that part uh, that part of deciding I wanted to become a doctor um, but also, you know, when it comes to like the doubt, like, uh, like Kat said, you're, you're always going to doubt yourself. Like, like even now, like even during your, like your first year of medical school, you're like, like, am I, am I cut out for this? Like, is this going to be okay? Like, like, was this the right choice? Um, especially when you see other people doing other things. Um, or if you like perform poorly on an exam, like you're going to have doubt no matter what. Um, but then you kind of reflect on like why you're doing this uh, and it kind of brings you back. And so I think you kind of will get through anything, you know, if, if it's what you want to do badly enough, you'll, you'll get through anything. And so I think that mindset's like helped a lot. Uh, and so I think that was the last question we had time for. So I'll hand this back to Nicole. Thank you, Sean. And, and thank you to all of you for taking the time to talk with us today um, and share so much about your experiences. Uh, let's give them all a virtual round of applause. <laughs> Um, and we really appreciate your time and best of luck with the rest of medical school.